Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be repairing Apple's infamous charging cables. If you're an Apple user, you've likely run into this very issue, where after a period of time, the cable begins to crack and then completely fall apart, exposing the shielding and wires underneath. I asked my Instagram followers if they had experienced this issue. Around 4,400 people voted, with over 3,000 saying yes. I'm going to be using two techniques which can be used to repair any of Apple's cables. Sugru, a moldable rubber, and heat shrink. Previously, Apple used a plastic material for their cables, just like almost every other cable from your Android phone and printer to the wiring in your house. These older cables held up great. However, in 2010, Apple switched to using a rubber-like material which you still see today. Comparing two older Apple cables, you can see how they've held up. The left one dating from 2003 and the other from 2012. This also occurred for MacBook chargers with the same switcher material. The newer MacBook cables are prone to the same cable degrading issue. Luckily mine hasn't degraded just yet, however it's started to yellow which has me a little worried. All the cables I'll be fixing have identical signs of failure. A crack in the plastic connector with the cable fraying exposing the shielding and a yellow discoloration to the cable. These cables definitely look gross. No, I don't have the world's dirtiest hands. The cable has discolored over time. Underneath you can see a lot of green, which I assume is the glue used to adhere the rubber onto the cable. This one ironically teared the day of filming this video. I picked up the cable to measure the end of the lightning connector and noticed a crack appear before my eyes. By the end of the day, it looked like this. You'd believe after 10 years Apple would revert to their older style of plastic cable given the issues people are having, however that's yet to be seen. I have taken frayed cables into the Apple store in the past with mixed results. Most employees I talked to said I was using it wrong, abusing the cable, or bending it at extreme angles, none of which I was doing. While I planned to fix these three cables, I found another broken one while filming. This one I used at my workbench. I'll need to use two methods to complete the repair to my cables. For the lightning cables, we are able to use 12mm heat shrink, of course in white to blend in with the cable. But for any of the larger connectors like 30 pin or a MacBook charger, we'll need to use Sugru. Both of these I picked up from my local hardware store. While mine specifically is called Kint Sugru, there are many different makers of the same product, so just look for a Sugru from any manufacturer. To apply the Sugru, we'll need to clean off our cable to ensure any of the dirt is removed. You may notice the cable will continually fall apart, which makes this process a little bit difficult. But once I believe the cable is clean enough, I'm going to bust out some Sugru and start molding it into shape. Now the packet says that I should mold it together in my fingers for about a minute before actually applying it to the cable. So having done that, we can now apply it to our 30 pin cable. I applied the whole packet of Sugru to this one cable. The reason being I wanted this cable to be as robust as it could be, as this gets used in my car for connecting my iPod. You can see it's applied, but it's a little bit bumpy. So I put it on the edge of the table and rolled it out. After about 30 seconds, we can now see our cable is looking quite nice. I can leave this overnight to dry and harden up. For our second cable, I'll be using heat shrink to reseal the cable. After cleaning, I can cut the tube to size, leaving a bit extra to prevent the current fracture from growing. Positioning the tube into place, lining it up with the top of the connector, I can then use a heat gun to slowly shrink the tube, resealing the damaged cable. After which we can compare our two repair methods. The Sugru is more springy and better suited for a charger. However, the heat shrink looks much better. Sugru can also be applied to the USB end of a cable if desired. You can see this one having a bulge at the top. This indicates it's about to fall to pieces. As for the rest of that 30 pin charger, it has yellow spots all over as the material is breaking down. While cleaning the other cords and preparing them for repair, they continue to crack and fall apart in my hands. It should be noted that the 2 meter version of these cords have a thicker shielding and a stiffer cable. While mine still fell apart, it was strong enough that I could feed the tube over the wire. One of the other cables kept bending and getting stuck. 
to no surprise by this point, trying to push the cable through caused it to further fall apart. In the end, I had to tape a spudger to the end to be able to pull it through. Once the tube had been lined up with the top of the connector, I could then use my heat gun to melt the tube into place. I could repeat the same process for our final cable, and we're ready to go. Let's put in all our chargers and test them out. Starting with my iPod and ending with the iPhone 6, we can see all our chargers are still working and have now been repaired. As for the cost of the repair, the Sugru cost me $7.85 for a pack of three, and the heat shrink was $30 for a pack of 22. If you can find it individually, definitely go for that option, but I was needing a new pack for some other projects as well. If I was to go out and buy all new cables from Apple, it would have cost me $132, which is a crazy amount for four charging cables, which are likely to break in the same way in a year or more. So if I had have only used a Sugru for this, the repair cost would have been as low as $8. Not only are you saving money, but also electronic waste. If your cable can't be repaired though, I recommend going for a high quality aftermarket cable from a reputable brand. As for MacBook chargers, I recommend the much older T-Style MagSafe 1 charger with the adapter converting it to MagSafe 2. This is what I use to charge my own Mac laptop. All in all, I think these turned out great considering what state they were in. This easy fix should prolong the life of the cable. Sealing up the exposed area stops it from getting damaged in that spot. However, it may eventually fray again in a different location. At least we can still get some more use out of them though. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the electronics repair playlist for more videos just like this one. If you're looking for some tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.